Paul Corner. It's good to be back here. Thank you for having me. Great. So this is Curtis Grimes, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Hello. And so here we are just two weeks and a little smidge into the new year. How's it going? It's going good. I uh, I kind of did some housekeeping and cleaning up and kind of re revamped the whole set. and Wow. It's kind of got a fresh start for for the new year so I'm kind of it's kind of exciting to get to get some new new breath you know? was this a resolution or did it just happen? not really it, it was just kind of like um, there, there there's I've had a to-do list for about the last year and so during the during the last month or so I just knocked it all out and well you know took care of I have noticed as I've worked on Dateline every week that you really could see how man until we got right up close to Christmas. People were working every day they could get and then it just kind of, there was a big sigh of relief as people started to be off. You do need some downtime. How many shows That's a right. year do you do? Uh, probably anywhere from 120 to 140 depending yeah. on how many Thursday gigs we get. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thursday, is that Thirsty Thursday gigs? <laughs> They, are, they do have those. We actually did one last night. Did you so, really? Yes, no. Well, I hope it went well. And I hope they sold a lot of beer. I, I hope they did, too. <laughs> they, that way they'll have us back. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'll never forget the first time that poor David said that. He said, if you're a new band, first thing I want to know is how much beer you sell. <laughs> that is, that is <laughs> very true. They don't even want to know your name, do they? <laughs> it's a direct correlation of, <laughs> of your, uh, I guess, worth is how much alcohol you can sell. Yeah, I think so. Well, on a totally different subject, um, back to you. We are, what, a month from spring training starting? Yes, ma'am. It's now, getting is, close. Is there anything in a musician's life like spring training? Um, I guess the the first of January would be our equivalent of spring training. Just kind of get shifting gears and getting ready uh -huh. to make the push. But uh, it's not like I have a couple buddies that, that are in the majors right now, and they... They'll take a few weeks off at the end of the season and go play and go hunt a little bit. And uh -huh. then, then they start getting ready. So. Well, I guess you can't afford to take a very long time, and then you're starting back at square one. That's right. And even if it's just more maintaining and kind of keeping keeping everything loose. Right. Tight, do you still exercise a lot since you were an athlete? I something? do. That's that's. I try to do something every day, whether I go to the gym or run or something, and that's that's kind of my stress reliever. That's my that's how I help my anxiety and well, stuff. That's good. So, and that probably does have a lot to do with that athletic mindset of just doing something. Well, you know, I was when I was a kid, nobody cared about that. I mean, we had recess and we played, and you took phys ed, but nobody really thought about the long-term effects and so I didn't start exercising daily until much later in my life and I think that people who do start younger they overall I think they feel a little better. Yeah I've noticed too it help, uh, helps me keep from getting sick as much. Oh and yeah. And just like saying especially being on the road and there's no telling how many germs you touch a right. day. And just, that's helped me kind And you don't want to walk from, around in a Purell suit. That's, that's right. You know because we don't get to call in sick so so it helps when you're Oh, when what an healthy. interesting point. What does a musician do when he can't call in set? I've, I've uh, luck, fortunately, I've been able to make every show. And one of the worst one was I had a show on 6th Street, and this was pretty early on. I had like 102 fever, and oh, I, would, I would put a wet rag in the ice bin and in between the, because those, those lights are so oh, bright yes, on you, so that yes. just made it worse. And, and we would do the three 45-minute sets, so I'd play the set, then go soak ice. my face with that ice, <laughs> and then do another set and go do the same thing. And then I broke my arm, um, I guess, two years ago. Did you have to so hire a guitarist? I, I did, I, <laughs> the first show, I didn't play guitar, and I, I got him to bring it up there and try to do acoustic song, um, and it didn't go horrible. So after that, I was like, if I can do one song, I can do the whole set. So I had this big, like, robo-arm thing. So anyways, we, we play the show, though. I guess that's Well, I hope that people are getting the point here that a musician's <laughs> life is just not that luxurious. <laughs> I was like, Craig Morgan, though, you see, like, when he broke his leg, he yes. a dirt bike, so he yeah. played the shows in a wheelchair. Yeah. So I guess it could have been worse. Could have been worse. It could always have been worse. I yes, think that's a good good statement to live by. Well, I understand that you are thinking about coming out with Bottom of the Fifth, which is the title of your album, but it's also a song. Yes, ma'am. 
So why is this the right time for that song? Um, well, I guess the obvious reason is this kind of has a very strong baseball references throughout the thing, and that um, pretty much was was my life growing up from the age of four through twenty. So uh, a lot of that's pretty pretty accurate, and in some of the storyline stuff is is pretty close. It's the inside <laughs> it's, it's skinny a, on Curtis. It's pretty huh? pretty accurate to the, for the most part, um, and then being right in time for baseball season and just kind of yeah. using that as, as the, to create buzz and just keep momentum going and, and take advantage of it because obviously it's baseball ties and if we can release it during baseball season that's just going to be another plus. Right, and um, you know what else it does? What's that? It gives the poor people on the radio something to say and they really appreciate <laughs> that's true. it. That is very true. There's, there, there will be stuff to talk about associated with this single. And it's a, it's one of, it's one I wrote on the EP too, so that's another another plus for me because um, I don't know it's it's just I feel like more honest and just kind of sincere when it's when a song I wrote being used as a single. Well, what is the story of Bottom of the Bell? Um, so we actually did it. It kind of starts off with a with a, a pitcher uh, being on the mound, and, and uh, we went to state my junior year of high school. And so I kind of used that story and incorporated it into to losing it, the, losing the game at the bottom of the fifth. Like you had it made, uh -huh. all you had to do was get eight more outs and, and you won state. And we kind of had a similar thing. I don't know if it was in the fifth inning or it was somewhere around there in the middle of the game yeah. where we were playing Weimer. And it was our first time to play on turf. You know, Podunk East Texas, well, we don't have Astro Turf. That's, that's <laughs> a new element. And um, so. What, for whatever reason, one inning just, we started having air after air after oh, air and turf bounces and guys were playing balls different than this, so it just kind of snowballed out of effect. So that's how I kind of came up with the basis part. And then um, the second verse kind of goes into a relationship and, and, and losing the girl because of the game. And I, I, my situation wasn't exactly like that, but I, I was engaged like very early on, freshman year of college and mm. wound up calling that off and um, that's kind of what got me into music oh. so um, that was a cool another element in, in the, the bottom of the fifth reference there would be like like a fifth of whiskey or whatnot right. because it kind of kind of did get into that point around that time too <laughs> so uh, and then trying to figure out a clever way to bring the two together and just have a have a fun upbeat um, just different different uh, approach to, to that topic and, that's, that's what we came up with, and I was happy with how it turned out, and we wound up using it for the right. title track. So. That's great. Well, it's a fascinating story, and I recommend everybody listen to it. Now, if they want to find out where you're playing or how to get their hands on bottom of the fifth, what do they do? Uh, CurtisGrimes.com would be the best place to start, and then it'll have the links for all the other social media stuff we're supposed to keep up with these days. <laughs> supposed to. <laughs> yes, well, thank you so much, Curtis. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure.